Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. What does that mean? Jesus said that, but what does it mean? There's, there's two or three that are gathered in his name. What is his name? There I am in the midst of them. The I am that I am is his name. It's that experience. Name comes from the Sanskrit naman, which means to know. It's that knowing of him. So what is that? Well, we're going to experience it next Sunday. We're going to have the simple, reverent prayer circle at 1020 right up here. We're all going to hold hands and we're going to pray for other people. And two or three are gathered in his name, which is the I am that I am of us, the spiritual nature of us. And that is what we call, in our tradition, the Christ. And remember I said a moment ago that the Christ is a loaded term because some people came from outside of Christianity. And so they go, I don't know what that is. It sounds kind of like you know some TV evangelist thing going on here. And then some came from deep, deep within Christianity and they go, man... It's kind of a, you know, a term that's very orthodox, but the understanding of what that word means is that it's, it's a spiritual essence. It's a spiritual nature. It's an experience. The Christ is my experience. Together, the, the Christ, Christ is, is my experience. experience. And it's not lofty. It's something that is a part of you. You, you experience it every time you have uh, an answer to a prayer. Every time you lift up your eyes to a sunset, when you, when you connect... When you connect yourself with your source. I connect myself with my source. Together, I connect myself with my source. Ah. Oh. But then, how does that work? I mean, if you're this toaster, and for the sake of argument, let's just say you are this toaster. You're supposed to laugh at that. It's 11 o'clock, you're awake now. So... This is you. And what's your purpose in life? Well, it's to make toast. You know, uh, Linda Breakall gives me her bread, this incredible bread. My son and I like have feasts of this bread with like melted butter on it, and we love it. But it's pretty good bread until you toast it, and then it's great. <laughs> the, the purpose of life is to do what? Uh, to grow spiritually, maybe? You've got you to gotta get in touch with it for yourself. What is it? The toast of life, which is the end result of life, maybe you think it's a job or a car or a boat or a boyfriend or a, a new house or a status or ego or I'm going to get what I want. Somebody said, you need to put a waffle in there and say, let go of my ego. You know? <laughs> and it ain't awful if I have this waffle. I don't know. I bet it, but Chris Selvig, blame Chris Selvig for that. It was his idea. But, but in my simple analogy, my more simple than that analogy, you are, you are, you are a being, you are a being that has a function. What came to me in meditation earlier this week when I was working on a completely different talk and I got that, that is the talk you're given that's going to be hijacked. It's been hijacked by this toaster and the toaster, the purpose of the toaster is to make toast, right? Your purpose is to create a spiritual consciousness in life, but how do you do it? Well, you can't do it unless you plug yourself in. So let's talk about this. There are two things. There's a source and there's cause. What or who is your source? God. 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 Okay, God. So God is your source, all right? And then what causes the connection Hmm. See, if I'm the toaster, I gotta plug into something. So, me, I'm the cause. I am the cause and God is the source. Together, I am the cause and God is the source. The cause is a focused act of will in which you plug into your source, God. Now, without plugging in, you can't make toast. So you can't get anything done. You can't achieve. You can't create a consciousness of satisfaction and joy of love and life. You can't make a difference in anyone's life unless and until you plug in. What we're going to do in next week's uh, uh, Simple Reverend Prayer Circle, what we're going to do is we're going to hold hands and we're going to bring in the names of people we want to pray for. And we're going to pray together 
for those people. We're not going to pray for ourselves. We're going to pray for other people. And I'm going to start it. I'm going to lead it. But we're going to, we're going to focus where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. We're going to focus that energy. Why? Because when you pray for other people, you get to experience that power, that presence yourself. The Christ, the experience of God, is an experience, not a concept, not a, a thing. You say Jesus, Jesus fully expressed it, but it is universal. In the first chapter of John, the definition is the word, the logos, which is a universal understanding. So, so whatever your understanding of God is, it is only a step-down transformer experience from the absolute allness of God. Let me explain that. When you drive down, when you drive down Rand Road, between here and the railroad tracks, there are big, high-power tension lines, and right alongside the road, there's a gigantic transforming station. What do they call those things? What do they call them? Transformer? That, that, that's what it's called. Okay. So, so there it is. Now, if I went and I took this, and I plugged into those high-power tension lines, what would happen? Well, my toaster. So I've got to do something so that I can use it. What do I do? I step it down. And that's what the transformer is for. It goes from whatever that is to 110 volt, and I can plug it in and I can use it. Your concept of God, your understanding of your higher power, whatever it is, however you language it or experience it, is your step-down transform <coughs> understanding of the absolute. Because the allness, the absolute of God, is just, it's just a little bit too much, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we step it down. So whether your understanding is lighting a candle for the Blessed Virgin, or an abstract concept of the force, or the Buddhist void, or, and now and hang in there with me, you say, but I have, I have the right concept of God. I went through that experience in my childhood, and I didn't buy that stuff. Now I have my experience, and it's my understanding of God is the right one. Even that, even that is a human understanding and interpretation that steps it down so that you can use it. And it's not wrong, it's not bad. You know, think of God, and this isn't Christmas time, but I talk about this at Christmas time. Think of God as a baby. That's what Christmas is about. <laughs> God. Some people are very metaphysical. They say, God's not a baby, but remember what Ernest Wilson said. He said, I know God is absolute, immutable, and personal principle, but sometimes I need God with skin on. So we have sometimes a need to break, to step things down. So this is all very abstract talk, but my, what I'm trying to say is, if you want to make some toast, you've got to see God as your source, but the way you do is by, that is by plugging into God as your source, and you are at cause. You insert a cause. Through your free will, through your focus act of will, you insert a cause, and you make God your source. And this, is, this isn't just abstract stuff. This is what you do every day when you do your spiritual practices. But what are you doing? Are you plugging yourself in? Because without plugging yourself in, you don't get any toast. Right? Even paper toast that I got off my, my printer. You don't, you don't get any toast. If you want to have a result in your life, and the ultimate result is, as Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. The ultimate result is the experience of God the experience of allness, the experience of life and love and peace and satisfaction and joy and all of those things, that experience, that experience is yours. But you have to open up to it. You've got to plug into it. When I was in ministerial school, my, my classmates would all go and they'd all hang out in the cafeteria. And what i do, i go to the Peace Chapel and I'd sit and I'd meditate for because I had all afternoon, I got to work in. I had to work in the Youth of Unity office, and a lot of things to do. I had to be intuitive. I had to be aware. People were always calling me with problems and things, and so I had to plug into my source. And so I had to be the cause, and I exercised that being, that cause of being, by going and meditating. But what do we do instead? We look to the world outside of us to fill that hole inside of us that needs to be filled with that God within. We watch the Celebrity Apprentice, or the guy who. Debating from the celebrity apprentice. <laughs> or we, we, we go, we have addictive behaviors. We, we do escapist things. We, we, we disempower ourselves and make ourselves victims by we think a person or a place or a thing is our source. Who is your source? 
God or them and it? Who is at cause? You or them and it? And so that's really what it is, the transformative consciousness that we get together in this church to celebrate together. And the opposite of it is what Jesus called the world. You know, people said Jesus said, uh, live uh, in the world but not of it. And uh, what are the world things that he said? He said, uh, what does it profit you if you gain the world but lose your soul? And, um, you know, remember the first of the Ten Commandments is you should have no other gods before me, that you should not view anything in your outer world as your deity, but it's just got to be something that's internal. So what is that world? It's not this world, planet Earth out here. It's a point of view that is disempowered and victimized because it thinks that them and it is the source, not God, and them and it is the cause, not you. Hang in here with me because this is some powerful stuff, and in our meditation, both the one we just had and the one we're going to have, we plug into the awareness of that source, and then it rolls out in our lives. Let me tell you a story about a guy um, named Mike McCord. I've shared about him before. He was a member of my church in Kansas, and we'd been there just a few months. I'd heard of this guy, but he didn't attend the church, but I was checking my answering machine, and we were driving out of town to go on vacation, and just as we got onto the uh, interstate, uh, I, I got the message that he had had a broken neck and that he was partially paralyzed and that he was in thus and such a hospital and I, I, I don't think I'd ever met the man but I'd heard of him and he didn't attend the church so uh, we're driving along and I, I noticed well there's the hospital and there's the offer I said Lynn could you pull off here uh, I need to go see this guy she said later that she wasn't too thrilled with the idea of starting off her vacation by my doing some pastoral work but later of course she realized what was going on. It was an intuitive awareness. It was, it was something that was being called to do. He was lying there and he'd given up. He had unplugged himself, or not plugged himself, into his source. And do you blame him? It's the ain't it awfuls. It's, it's that which, is, which, of course, we go through. And we're human beings. We have to have a spiritual experience. We have to honor that part of ourselves. So he was lying there feeling disempowered, feeling victimized. And, and, and he writes in his book, because he had a complete and total healing. He writes in his book that, that when I came in, and he didn't know me and I didn't know him, he said that somebody else who he didn't know would come up and do that, made him think, maybe there's some hope. Maybe there's some, some hope. And we prayed together. Well, it's interesting enough that he sneezed uh, a couple of days later and had an even more serious injury until he, he was truly uh, paralyzed. But he worked with he worked with these principles. He worked with it. He did two things simultaneously, uh, working in his consciousness. Whenever he couldn't be in the rehab room, which they called him the Energizer Bunny because he would do rehab, all that they would allow him to do, he would lie there in bed and listen to meditation tapes, mostly Jane Elizabeth Hart, but other people, and uh, constantly do spiritual work, constantly do this work. He worked with it a little by little. He began, and they said, the doctors said, all the doctors he ever met in the Kansas City area said they'd never met anybody who had ever been able to walk at all with his injury, with his love of injury. And he not only walked by the end of it, he was climbing the tallest mountains in Colorado. He was in marathons. This guy was an incredible person, but it was a gradual, long-term experience. And let me tell you about a very interesting thing that happened. Jane Elizabeth Hart was teaching classes, and he would show up as he started to get better in his wheelchair, and he'd sit there, and um, but he wasn't there one day, and she and I actually had this on tape, and some people thought it was a setup, that he was waiting outside the door, waiting for her to say this, so that he could burst in, but she actually said the words, and when you hold in faith, and when you stay true to yourself, the door will burst open. And at that moment, he bursts the door open and walks in wow. under his own power. Wow. I'm telling you this, it was so dramatic, but there was no accident that it happened that way. It was for everybody in that room and for you to hear. Because don't give up on yourself. There is that power and that presence within you that is pushing through to experience more. And it's not a specific thing. It's not even the physical healing that he was experiencing. He was real clear. It was the spiritual awakening. 
Carl Jung said that nobody ever had a healing that he ever met psychologically uh, in their later years unless they had a spiritual awakening first. And uh, Harvard uh, said that every single miraculous healing they studied, they had a shift in consciousness first before the physical thing happened, the physical change. You've got to shift your consciousness first, and the way you do that is by being at cause and plugging into God as your source. So how do you do that? Well, this, this man went on, he goes from ward to ward in the Kansas City area to all the hospitals and gives hope and strength to these people. And he doesn't tell them, no, you're going to have the same thing happen to you that happened to me. Because he knows that's not available to everybody. But he says, you can always have more. You can always have that something more. You can have a greater experience of life and living. And he was actually banned for a couple of words because the doctors didn't want him to give false hope to people. But there he was. Living this. Now, in your life, where do you need to push through some resistance? That part of you that wants to just sit on the road and wait for somebody to hit you and say, ain't it awful? That part that's given up on yourself. Do you know anybody in your life like that who's given up on themselves? They have disempowered themselves and unplugged the toaster. They can't make the toast of life. So how do you plug in? You do your spiritual work, you do your spiritual practices, you take responsibility for your soul. I take responsibility for my soul. Together, I, I take, take responsibility, responsibility for my soul, and I am at cause. Together, and, and I, I am, am at, at cause. cause. And usually we think, oh, that's so hard or it's so big. You know, just doing a little at a time. A little at a time. You know, I had an experience once where I, uh, I, I was sitting on, I had a cheap couch. I was new in ministry, and I had a cheap couch I bought for 25 bucks, and it didn't really um, support me very well, and I was sitting cross-legged, and I heard a pop, and it was audible, and it was, I went in and got an x-ray, it was my tendon, if, 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 you're, if this was my bone, it was the rubber band that goes on the end that holds it, like, together, and it popped off. And he actually showed it to me, and, the, and I said, what do I do? And he says, nothing you can do about it. Once it's off, it's off. You know, you're just probably not going to be skiing or anything like that, or, 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 or ice skating or something like that. But, you know, just kind of take it easy. Well, I just visualized everyday light there. And I just didn't think much about it. I didn't even really have an intention in mind. Three years later, oh, I didn't have medical insurance for a period of time. So three years later, I got my medical insurance back, and I went... And I had it x-rayed again. I just was curious about what I was doing. And the guy said, no, there's nothing wrong here. It's, it, it, it's, it's on there. I said, but it, it, but it couldn't be. He says, oh, yeah, there's no way if it came off it would ever reattach itself. How does it do that? You don't stretch a rubber band inside your bone and make it go over there. But why did that happen? Because I just did a little work at a time. You plug yourself back in. You plug your toaster back into the wall. I am at cause and God is my source. Together, I am at cause and God is my source. But the opposite of that is the world. It's looking that they are at cause and it is my source. It is at cause and they are at my source. And we, you know, people talk about the world and they think, oh, the world is some terrible thing out here in the outer No, it's a point of view that thinks that they and it are your source and cause. John wrote, Do not love the world or anything in it. The world and its desires will pass away, but if you do the will of God, you'll experience eternity. And in the book of John, Jesus said, I reveal to you all the ones who you gave me from this world. They were always yours. And now I've passed on to them the message you gave me. They do not belong to the world, just as I don't belong to the world. They don't belong to this world any more than I do. Just as you sent me into this world, I'm sending them into this world. Now what does this mean? This means moving yourself from a disempowered view of yourself as being plugged into the outer affairs and circumstances of your life as giving you cause and source, and moving yourself into the understanding that you are at cause by plugging yourself in to the source which is within you. The kingdom of heaven is within you. And you can language it any way you want to. I'm working with the consciousness of Christ consciousness, but it is not something that's limited to Jesus or something that separates religion out. It is a, a, a way of understanding the universal spiritual essence of all things. And you can retranslate it the way you want to because, because the universe is infinite and ultimately that high tension power line 
that is the allness that is God is just a little too vast and abstract for us to plug into. It would just blow our minds. So we've got to plug it down, step it down so that we can use it. How are you doing that in your life? What are you doing in your life? What are your practices? Are you at least taking the time to move with this consciousness? They're so, they're, it means not selling yourself out for a short-term gain in order to, to avoid responsibility on the long term. There's a great story of this, and, and it's, it's found in, in, in the book of Genesis, and it's about selling yourself out for a short-term gain. Is there anything in your life where, for instance, a codependent relationship or substance abuse or something where you, on the short term, you get a benefit, but in the long term, it's a loss. This is the story of it. Jacob was cooking some stew. Esau, his brother, came in from the open country famished, and he said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That's why they gave him the nickname Red. Jacob replied, for some of your birthright. Hey, I'm going to die. What good's my birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me that you'll give me your birthright. So Esau swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, got up and left. So he sold out his birthright. This is a wonderful symbolic story about what we do to sell ourselves out on a short term in order to avoid responsibility for the long term. So where in your life are you selling yourself out in a codependent relationship, in a addictive behavior, or trying to get a short term solution <coughs> and not living from a higher principle. You know, I, I shared a story at uh, 9 o'clock that, that was challenging to some people, so I'm going to try a different story about where there's times in life where you, you got, you're tested, and you get to ask, answer the question, what am I really made of here? Think about a time in your life when you have had that happen. I was in a church once, and I'd been there, this was my church in Florida, and the, um, the Unity author, Mary Cupferly, had been the minister there for 17 years. She's a wonderful minister. We were good friends. We, we would uh, go out to lunch once, once a month, and just a wonderful person. But when they hired me, there was another guy who they did not hire, and there was somebody who was attached to that and, and withdrew from the church. And uh, she came to me, and she said, Now look, this guy gives a quarter million dollar gift every August, at the end of summer, when things are slow in Florida, and you need to go and convince him that he needs to come back to church. And I said, well, have you talked to him? And she said, yeah, and he says he, don't, he won't have any part of it because his friend was not hired as the minister. And uh, I said, well, does he know that the church is doing well and everything? Yeah, he knows. He knows I've told him. I said, and I knew it intuitively. It's all over me. I said, this is a perfectly wonderful church. If he doesn't know, if he cannot accept this, then my going and trying to drag him into it isn't going to make any difference. And I just let it go, and the church prospered. It did beautifully. Now, now you, some people are going, you're crazy. But the truth is, is that there's things in life you look at, you say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go to the short term. I'm going to go for what the long term benefit is. It is about the commitment you make to your soul. What is your commitment to? Your soul. Jesus said not to disempower yourself. What does it profit you if you gain the world but lose your soul, meaning the life force energy in your life? Am I, are you with me on this? Do you get what I'm talking about? So now translate this to your life and where in your life can you take spiritual action to meditate and pray and do your affirmations and do your work and with a sense of detachment like I did with my tendon without any you know, trying to force a result and just move with it. This morning, we're taking in some new members. Uh, we actually have one at this service. We had one at the last service. And this is not about joining. You know, what do you do in a church where you don't believe that joining the church sends you to heaven? That, 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 that it's a requirement for some kind of spiritual thing. What does it mean? It means a commitment to your soul's growth. And even though it's one person who's going to be coming up here in a few moments, it's not that, that about them, it's about you, about your commitment to your own soul and your growth, and they're just mirroring it to you. And at the level that you're at today, you are making that commitment in whatever outer way by being at cause and plugging yourself back into your source. 
So, so keep that in mind as we go forth with this. So let's move into this moment, this now moment, and just know that in this now moment, in this now moment, that you are plugging yourself, just imagine yourself plugging back into your source. You're at cause. God is the source. God is the source of all my good. No people, places, or things. I am the cause of all my good. I plug myself into my source through a focused act of will. I am at one already with my Christ consciousness. I am already at peace in this Christ radiance. I am already immersed and shining and expressing as this Christ consciousness. I am already radiating this light. However I understand or language this, this is my innate beingness. And all my needs are met as I source myself in God and I place myself at cause. And so it is. We are open to the spirit and we can even feel the spiritual consciousness that we call the Christ in our open, outstretched, empty hands. So take another deep breath and let it out. And Can you feel a tingling there? Can you imagine a life and an energy? This radiance, this presence, can even be felt in our outstretched palms. Experience this, feel this, and ground yourself in the experience. What is the Christ it is not a concept or a thing, it's an experience. And so open yourself up to an experience in this moment. I am now open and receptive to my experience of Christ consciousness. I am now open and receptive to my experience of Christ's presence. Thank you for this infinite spiritual presence. Thank you, God, for the radiance of my Christ consciousness. And I feel it radiating forth from me. And I imagine it, visualize it. Thank you for the deep abiding presence, the peace and the joy and the love of my Christ consciousness. Thank you for the infinite awareness, understanding and guidance of this spiritual presence. Thank you for the experience of reconnecting to my spiritual source. Thank you that as I focus my will to reconnect, to plug myself in to my spiritual source, I feel the energy, I feel the life I'm enfolded in the love and the peace of this Christ consciousness. As I open myself even deeper, I move into an awareness, a peace, a presence. Radiance,
I am lifted into the infinite spiritual presence. of this now moment <coughs> I move and I am moved by this infinite spiritual presence and I let go into it and rest for a moment I am the cause and God is the source of all my good and as I reconnect with my source through focusing my will and placing myself fully connected, causing myself to be fully connected with my source, I feel an infinite flow of energy and presence that moves out into my world and my life. I am not sourced in any outer thing. I'm not sourced in people or places, them and it. I am not sourced in outcomes. I'm sourced in my infinite spirit. Thank you, God, that this, I am empowered. This empowers me. And I move with it, and it moves me. It moves me. And so it is. This is the time in which um, we're going to take our offering, and we're going to take in our member to our church. So. Our, our offering statement is, I, as with God as my source, I give and receive abundantly. Together, with if God, God as my source, I give and receive abundantly and silently. And again aloud together. With God as my source, I give and receive abundantly. And so it is. She's a... Fourth generation unity. Uh, her daughter is fourth generation unity. So that's uh, incredible. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Mm -hmm. And we're so grateful that you took the time and you took the step to make a commitment to your inner spiritual growth. You know, in unity, membership is different. It's not a, a, a thing that gets you into heaven. It's not something that's required. But it's something that makes an outer commitment to an inner spiritual longing and yearning of your soul. Now, not everybody, of course, is standing up here, but she's standing up here in your place. Because what she's doing is making a spiritual commitment just as in this moment, you can make a spiritual commitment to your own soul's growth. And so as you sing the song, I Behold the Christ in You to Her, I want you to not only look into her eyes and let that go forth, but let it come back to you from her eyes and let that strengthen your inner commitment to your spiritual growth. So I want to, let's just have a little moment of prayer and take into our beingness, Elena, but a little bit of our own spiritual commitment as well. Each one of us makes that deep, powerful inner commitment to be the cause. And God is our source. And as we affirm it for Elena, we see it for ourselves as well. Thank you for this wonderful church and this great spiritual adventure that we are on. And so it is. Amen.